sort of a 2012 storage technologies. In this session, we'll be talking about thin storage devices. In the EMC, we also refer, refer to these as virtually provisioned storage devices. Prior to the introduction of thin or virtually provisioned storage devices, customers were typically doing non-thin or thick storage allocations. And when they did these storage allocations, they ensured that they had sized appropriately for expected growth. And that empty space then became effectively white space within the file or the file system, and it was locked into that particular logical unit. If it was never used, then it effectively became wasted space. Um, with the ability then to consolidate a lot more of these workloads, both in terms of virtualization entering into the business place, as well as the increase in compute power of servers, systems were brought together. And when they were brought together, we were able to then co-locate these devices. And if we could unlock that white space or the empty space that had been locked into those non-thin devices, then we could provide a better return on investment. So in these thin environments, storage allocations were made against the thin device on an as-needed basis. So as the file was allocated, blocks were consumed and provided to the LUN, and then anything that, that wasn't allocated wasn't consuming any space. So it was a better return on investment for everybody. Well, there was a challenge specifically in the Windows Server 2008 uh, two and earlier versions. Um, really, in these versions, Windows was tolerant of the fact that there was a thin device. It really didn't know that the device was thin, nor did it particularly care. As long as allocations were made and it could read right to that device, then it was tolerant of these storage entities. The real problem was that when you removed a file, so deleted the file from the file system, at the block level, nothing really happened. What was happening is that NTFS would unlink the device and the blocks would remain allocated on the back end. So there was no communication from NTFS to the storage device to indicate that those blocks were now freed and could be returned to the pool. So what would end up happening over time is that new allocations, so if you added a new file or potentially if a f the file grew, new allocations could come out of previously unallocated blocks. And what would end up happening is something that's shown in this little graph at the bottom of the screen. So from onset, there would be some amount of NTFS allocation and you would reach a point kind of midway through where there would be a plateau. Now files could be added and deleted and files could be growing and, and removing space. And from the NTFS volume, it would look like it was at a steady state. However, those new allocations were sometimes hitting blocks that had previously not been allocated. So when you looked at the pool allocation, you could end up with that red line where you're on a trajectory to 100% allocation. Now, if there was space in the pool, no harm, no foul, and life would still be okay. But there was an opportunity to, to be better and a better citizen with respect to thin devices. And so in server 2012, there was the introduction of thin support. Now, this was a new specification that came out for server 2012, and it required that the storage device itself tell Windows Server through inquiry information that it supported or that it was a thin device and that it supported unmap operations in effect. So for EMC storage arrays, that was implemented as firmware updates in our environments. For VMAX, that came as part of the 
5876 Q4 2012 service release so anything later than that version would also provide support for this um, for VNX this was supported and introduced in the block operating environment known as Inyo MR1 and that's the 5.32 release of the block operating environment um, when that implementation was provided, NTFS now would do unmap operations in addition to simply unlinking the file. So someone deleted a file, it would be unlinked, but NTFS would now turn around to the storage and say, you know those blocks that allocated that file object, we can now unmap them and return them back to the thin pool. So let's have a look at a quick demonstration on unmap capabilities of Windows Server 2012. So here we have a desktop of a Windows Server 2012 system. There are a number of volumes that are thin devices. They all come from the same thin pool at the backing store. We have an application that is going to monitor the space allocation within the thin pool and so every five seconds this sample will be shown on this uh, moving graph. Uh, at the moment it is allocating at around 1.3 terabytes of space and so that will continue to monitor the pool while we execute some operations. Now the, these commands actually deal with uh, offloaded data transfer. So here we're looking at the value of ODX um, and we are going to disable ODX operations because the system that we're using effectively u implements ODX and so we would see behavioral differences. So I wanted to show the real-time interface um, and experience when doing ODX operations. So we have a 200 gigabyte VHDX file. Now this has been fully allocated, so it has data in it, and we're going to make a copy of it and put it into ThinVol03, which previously had no space. Now we are doing fiber channel connectivity, and so uh, in this particular instance, we're doing around 300 megabytes per second. It'll vary. Um, this is obviously going to take quite some time and we'll see allocations coming out of the pool. Now we have accelerated this portion of the video just to <laughs> go through that 15 minutes of, of time. Um, so we've completed the file copy operation and it's just about to terminate um, and you can see that the graph on the left hand side has moved from 1.3 terabytes to around 1.5 well, it was a 200 gigabyte file, so that makes sense. So we've made the allocations against the pool, and that would be as expected for any sort of operation. Now, this is the file, the 200 gigabyte file, and in this instance, it's been fully copied, so we'll delete it now from the file system. And in the past, as explained, nothing would really occur within the pool, but now in server 2012, when we have thin support, the file delete will subsequently cause deallocations. Now this is kind of a background task, so even this portion of the demonstration has been accelerated, but those samples that you can see in the graph are five second intervals. So over the course of, of a number of minutes, the uh, depending on the file size, the allocations are unmapped from the pool and our pool returns back to the allocation space that it had prior to the file copy. So um, we are back to our 1.3 terabytes allocation. Now the it, most interesting thing is that when we look at a virtual machine, for example, in this case this is a remote desktop connection to a virtual machine, um, we have the introduction of VHDX files. So if we go to Hyper-V Manager and look at this particular virtual machine, which is running on this system, and we add a VHDX file, special things start to happen for us. So in the file system on ThinVol2, I have a 300 gigabyte VHDX file. 
Now, it has to be VHDX for this functionality to occur. VHDs don't actually do it. Now, that volume previously was, or that VHDX was previously mounted, and it does have data within it. So it's now been added to the virtual machine. If I go into disk management and scan for new devices, there's the 300 gigabyte file. Now it's offline because it's our SAN policy, turn it on and we can see the, the contents of, of that volume now from within the virtual machine. So there is a backup file within that file system and it was 226 gigabytes in size. So now we're in the virtual machine, we have a VHDX mounted and we've just deleted a file within the VHDX. What ends up happening is that gets transferred through the virtualization layer. So Hyper-V understands VHDXs and unmap operations and now the Windows Server 2012 instance is passing through unmaps down to the parent and the parent is doing the unmap from the pool. So even as you deploy virtual machines in the environment they can be utilizing unmap operations from the pool and being first-class citizens with respect to optimizing the experience. So um, if we look at the optimized drive UI, so we mentioned this that there were other ways to optimize a volume and therefore execute unmap operations. Um, this is that interface um, and you can see down the bottom there is a scheduled optimizations and so by default Windows will be running background optimizations as well. And that's the end of our session for today. Hopefully you found it useful and we'll see you next time.